Hi, in this video we will talk about how to calculate the mean from a data set and then also calculate the upper and the lower confidence intervals. And then finally we would plot a chart like this using ggplot. So let's get started. We'll be using these two packages. The mean can simply be calculated by giving a mean command. And then we have created the, the mean for this and printed it, which is four. Let's go towards a more practical example. Let's create a data frame. DF, which is this. And let's calculate the mean of the score. And then we will also look at how to create the mean for each gender or each group. Like we did before, the mean can simply be calculated by giving a mean command. So this is the mean for all the scores. Now, how would you store that value back into your data frame? You could use dplyr for that. And then using the dplyr and the pipe command, we are saying that we want to mutate using the data frame df we want to create another column in that which is overall mean value and then the value of that would be the mean of the score so if i run this you would get the data frame with an additional column and because we told it to create mean of the overall score and put it into each record so it has actually put the value of uh, the mean in each record and if you wanted to do a group mean that's also possible. So by introducing the group by command, so we are grouping it by gender, and then exactly the same thing. If I run this, you would notice that now it has given us the mean for each group. So the mean for the male and the mean for the females. Notice that we still have four records in there. And if you only wanted to see the summary level values, that means one record for the, the male, one record for the female. You could do that in introducing the group by command. And then instead of mutating, you would say that I want to summarize it. So the group mean value is the mean score. And in this data frame, you would only get two records, one for the female and one for the male. Notice that I've actually put the group sequels drop. And if I didn't do that, you would get this warning saying ungrouping output. So that's why if you put it back in there, it will be gone. Now, sometimes in your real world data, you would have some missing values. For example, in my data frame now, I got a missing value of the score. What do we do in this? So if I go and calculate the mean, is giving me an error or any because it can't calculate the mean because one of the data points is missing. There's an option na.rm equals true, which will remove the, the missing record for the calculation of the mean in this case. And you would get the mean of 23.5 for the remaining for the remaining values of the scores. You could also impute the data. For example, in, in your real world data, you would use imputation or imputation is nothing but calculating a realistic value for that particular missing data value. In this case, for example, you could score, you could actually store the mean of the overall in instead of your missing data. So in this case, I've given you an example so we had originally this data and the data in, in the case of the last record was missing. We actually imputed the data using the using the mutate command and if else command saying, if the score is not available, then put the mean score in there. Otherwise, just copy the score. So if I look at this, so this is the result. The score was present, so it has actually copied 10 in there. Score was present, it has copied 20 in there. Score was not present, so it has actually calculated the overall mean of the data and then put it up there. That's one way of doing it. 
So let's go to another example. And in this example, I want to calculate the confidence intervals. So using slightly bigger data set, I have 26 records starting from A to Z and then random scores and then the genders. One way to calculate the confidence interval is to use the t-test. You would notice that t-test has given you the data saying that the mean is 12.65 and then the 95% confidence interval is 12.01 and the upper confidence interval is 13.29. So that's one way of doing it. But there's another way of doing it is by using another package called describe tools or desk tools. So with that, another command becomes available, which is the mean CI command. And I'm saying, I want to calculate the mean for the score and the method is classic and the confidence level interval is 95 or 0.95. So this has given us the mean and then the lower confidence interval and the upper confidence interval. So if you wanted to store these values in your data, you could have the first value, which is the mean, the second value, which is the low confidence interval, the third value, which is the upper confidence interval. So using this one, two, three, you can actually pick the values of this mean CI output. And in this example, I would copy this. So I'm using my data frame, which we just created, and I want to group the data by gender. And then I'm summarizing so that I only get two records in my final output, one for the gender male, one for gender female. So calculating the mean score, putting the first value in there as the mean, putting the second value there as lower confidence interval and the third value of um, as upper confidence interval. So if I run this DF2, I have the output, which is the mean, the lower confidence interval and the upper confidence interval. And finally, let's plot this data and see what it does for us. So I'm going to create a simple plot in ggplot. So we're able to plot two points in there. The, the, conf the confidence intervals are not yet plotted, just the mean value. So now I'm introducing the confidence intervals. Using the Y min and Y max, I can say low confidence interval and the upper confidence interval from our data frame DF2. And if I run this, the output would actually create a vertical line. This is the upper confidence interval and the lower confidence interval. And similarly, we can also plot the text. So the text values are shown. So the low confidence interval values have been shown. And now using the same method, I'm going to get the upper confidence interval and also the gender mean. Notice that I've actually used the adjust justification to move the, the points a bit to the right, otherwise it'll start overlapping there. And you can adjust it the way you want it. So here we go, we got all the values plotted. And finally, let's make some more adjustments to the plot before it becomes ready. I've introduced the, the labels. So I'm changing the label Y to mean and the label X to gender, which is already there. And I also want to put a title at the top and then I'm using theme classic. So if I run the whole chart, we get our final plot, which is this which is showing the, the mean values and then the upper confidence interval and the lower confidence interval for each of the gender. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you found this information useful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.